All right, we finally got the uh, Ford up on the lift and I looked underneath it and this thing is as good underneath as it is on top. Matter of fact, it's better underneath than it is on top. If you come under here, you can see all the wiring and stuff I got to get out in the way that I take this out. It's bolt cutters and uh, snips. I just cut it all. I'm not trying to salvage any of it. It's all junk. And this is the flathead oil pan. And you come back here, this is flathead three speed and it has an electric overdrive in it that uh, like I said I'm not real familiar with them I don't know how exactly they work but that's the overdrive and something that's kind of unique this is the brake master cylinder and this is the clutch z-bar right here and it hooks up here and it goes through the master cylinder over here to the clutch pedal really weird how it goes through there. They, a lot of engineering went on there. So that one's an unusual one. And John had cut, put this, took this motor out, or the other motor out, and put this motor in and got it all to this point. The exhaust on it, the muffler, it's got a hole in it. Never was going to use it. But if you look at rocker panels, these things are solid as a rock. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them at all. Makes me happy. And uh, same way the other side, they're really good. And the bracing, and I don't know what kind of undercoating, if I'm sure it was factory, I think it was factory, whether it was, uh, but it stopped the rust. And then, uh, the springs to me look like they're wore out, they're flat. I don't know if that was the design or not. And you can tell I'll have to buy a new shock. That one's leaking a little hydraulic fluid. This one's leaking a little also. Wow, this frame is solid. Oh yeah. There ain't a, I found one place that it's rusty and that's up front, but it's in a body support, no big deal. Hmm. Wow. You can fix it. I've never, I've had two cars that are probably better than this one, but this ranks at number three. And for this one to sit and never be taken care of, it's a number one. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this thing is nice underneath. And this rear end? That's um, a, uh... Yeah, from the information I get, uh, they're not very strong, and this rear end is bad anyway. It's got something broke in it. Okay. So uh, we're not using this. We're still deciding what we're going to do. The Jaguar is still in front running, but not 100% sure. I do have, I found a rusty spot right here. You can see that. That's okay. not significant. It's just at the bottom, but it is rusty. And they used to uh, pull, let's see if it's got it over here. No, this, this side's better. Well, this side's Perfect. Mm. And what they, people used to couldn't afford a truck and nobody wanted to drive a truck around anyway back then. So they'd take their car and they'd put a trailer hitch on it. And I can't imagine them pulling much, but you never know what they pulled with this thing. Good. The, here's another thing that usually rots out is a spare tire. Yeah, that's place. amazing. Yeah, and it's solid. And maybe one reason you see the size of the hole, I can get two of my fingers in it. Yeah, so wouldn't it, get wouldn't get jammed up with stuff. Right. Very nice. So it uh, very nice car. I'm very pleased. Yeah. Cool. You did get the hole in it, right? Mm-hmm. What the bread?
<laughs> you do. <laughs> okay. I'm taking the uh, body off the frame and some of these old bolts and nuts are rotted on. So I have to get out my trusty Miller plasma cutter. Oh, Probably dear. should have got the torch. It would have been a little easier, but it's more cumbersome. This thing's really easy to get around. Okay. So I've got that one out, that one out. Tell me when. Anytime you're ready, sir. Okay, what I'm doing now, I'm stripping all this stuff off of this car because I'm going to take the body off the frame. And I pretty much got it all done. I'm taking the bumper off now. And then I got to pull the gas tank. There are three bolts in the trunk that I got to take out, and it'll be ready to come off the frame. So I got help here. I don't have much help, but. Bumper. It's going to come right off. I need a punch. So we'll walk around the car and then we'll come back to this. I got to pull this gas tank and uh, it's connected to the body. And once I get it off, then I will be able to lift this thing up and. Uh, Get it off the body. I haven't found anything that I'm surprised with on the car. I had to use my power because some of these old bolts were uh, rusted and I couldn't get them off, so I used a plasma cutter to cut them off. Only had to do two of them this one right here, then one up here. And uh, you can see this little bit of rust here. It's not a big deal. Yeah, nothing structural. So she's ready to come out. I do have to, uh, the steering column up there, I have to disconnect it once I do that. Then I can uh, pick it up off the body. So let's walk out here to the box and I'll show you the motor. Watch yourself. Okay, so we're going to start the motor. Well, there's the, uh Transmission cross member. Yeah, that out. caused me a little bit of problems getting it out. Hmm. And this is a straight axle under the 56 Ford. I've gone, cha changed around, changed around, but it looks like I'm going to put a straight axle under this car and hopefully an 8.8 .8 out of an Explorer in the back end. That's the game plan today. And, uh, This is my, where I keep all my tires and rims, and I put the uh, flathead in here, and when I get a chance, I'm going to put some plywood down and put it up against the wall, and then when I start my project on that, but this thing is in great shape. So now we measured the transmission of the uh, 460. Did we ever get the measurement of this thing? Nope, never did. Because yeah, that looks uh, that looks long, more than yeah, more than the twenty two that we were thinking it might be. Hold on. Do you remember what we measured it at? Well, uh, yeah, we measured the. Uh, it was a total of seventy two inches, uh, front to rear from on the four sixty setup. Okay, this is 35 inches. Trans that is two inches bigger than we measured the transmission of the 460. Is it? Yep, and that, so that makes the motor and because the tri the motor was three inches shorter, and it was a total of 72 is what we were up to. 72 with well, this thing is 65 inches. The problem that I'm going to run into putting the 460 in is the bell housing on that thing is so big. Yeah, we're gonna have to and cut it away, huh? Do we remember what? size the engine yeah this thing is what 30 30, 30 inches yeah the engine was 33 33 well that mm -hmm. be bad. Oh. okay well it may surprise me it may go in easier the 460 may go in easier than I think it will hmm but uh yeah that's my next project is this motor building something to put it in 
So that's where we're at. My first experience with the flathead was I put a 53 Mercury uh, engine in a 40 Ford. And the big deal was right here, the water pumps on this, you see how they go down and under like that? They go like mm -hmm. that. On a 51 Mercury, they come out and stick out. Okay. And it fits in a 44 perfect. Mm -hmm. But uh, even in 64 when I did it, these water pumps were hard to get mm -hmm. expensive. Right. And what's this? That's a, that's your, what, a PCV valve replaced with this. Oh, it, that, okay. It comes out of the intake, goes under here, and goes out there. And you used to see a lot of cars all the time looking underneath them when they were giving it the power. It was blowing stuff out of here like crazy. Right. Okay. So the PCV valve took the place of that. Okay. I could see that being a uh, an emissions nightmare for folks. <laughs> <laughs> it never bothered me. Right. <laughs> but I think it bothered a lot of people. Understood. But this is an overdrive transmission. And, okay. Uh, it's got two solenoids on it that shift gears. I don't get it. I had a uh, we had a uh, a viewer explain the uh, the overdrive how it worked on that was neat. Oh really? Yeah, it's just in the comments. Uh, so what did he say? Uh, you'll have to go back and look. Okay. <laughs> he said uh, that it engaged and and then uh, it would it would actually engage in overdrive and then it would allow it to freewheel in a certain way. Yeah, I, knew, I know they freewheel. Right, I but they, he told he said how it engaged and all. So go back and read it. It's fun. It's good to read. But you know, back then, the only thing that I could figure because you didn't feel it gaining a speed or anything, the overdrive. All it did was let the car freewheel rather than backing it down. You know. Alright, time to do some work, huh? Yeah. Let me put this camera down.